After two and a half years of traveling full time, we have finally begun the part of our travels that we are calling season four. In case you're wondering, season one had us exploring Eastern Europe and some incredible places in the Middle East. Season two covers our seven months in South America and included some of the most beautiful places we've been to in our entire lives. Season three is all about Asia and the incredible food, people, and places that can be found there. And now in season four, we're driving from Canada all the way down to Panama with our dog, Evie. In the last video, we said a tearful goodbye to our families in Canada and crossed the border into the United States before trying car camping for the first time with mixed results. I feel like I'd be gone to a campground. This would have felt more like camping and less like sleeping on the side of the road. It's currently day four of this new adventure to Central America. In this video, we're going to cover the remaining 700 miles from Panguit, Utah, to the USA and Mexico border in Arizona. You know what's kind of funny? We like woke up this morning and I was like, oh cool, go to Bryce Canyon. I didn't know that today was probably the most beautiful day of this drive. <laughs> yeah. We're starting the journey by driving through stunning rock formations that line the road leading up to Bryce Canyon. At more than 8,000 feet, the temperatures are dropping significantly, but our spirits are as high as ever. We have bundled up in all the warm stuff that we now own. <laughs> well, maybe more me than you. You look, you look pretty normal. Yeah. <laughs> to go and see Bryce Canyon, I'm so excited. It's our first, I feel like it's our first like proper tourist destination since we left Canada. I also feel like this is probably our first ever U.S. National Park. Hey, yeah, we heard so much so. about it. And to be honest, we didn't do a ton of research about what we were going to see no. on this road trip. But we, just, we literally looked at the map and like, I recognize that national park, that name. We should so, try that one. Yeah. Um, so we're going to, I think, walk between, it's called Sunrise and Sunset Point because that's the dog friendly part, really, of Bryce uh, National Park. Holy. Wow. <laughs> okay, I just got to say that driving up here, we had no idea what was around us because no. we were just going through a forest. But now yeah. all of a sudden. Wow, that is stunning. Oh my goodness, this was. What do you think, Eve? Super worth it so far. <laughs> wow, that's so gorgeous. <laughs> Bored. She's like, boring. Why don't you throw a frisbee down there and that'll make things more exciting. <laughs> She wants to like get out and explore, but totally. there's a massive canyon right right behind you, so. You're not allowed to be there. Oh, my shadow. <laughs> You're not allowed to be there. Oh, hi. <laughs> well, this is. Epic. This is so cool. The views are honestly so stunning it's and so the red good. rock just really pops out yeah. in the sunlight. Beautiful. Yeah. So I just read a sign that said that the indigenous people who used to live here in this canyon, they had an oral story that said that each of these hoodoos, like these tall spires that we see here, was actually what they called a legendary, legendary people, a legendary person, um, which I guess was said to be originally a person that had been turned into a hoodoo by the coyote. Um, and they've been turned, these people had been turned into hoodoos for their bad deeds. So I think that's a pretty cool story. Wow. She's like facing that way, <laughs> views over there. Has no idea where to look. No idea. You're her most interesting thing here. <laughs> yeah, it's actually really nice. When the wind stops, I think the tree's blocking it. It's really nice to just watch and enjoy and admire just this geological phenomena. I think it's made out of like limestone and sand and clay and it's just been worn down by water and that's created all these different cool formations, these little spires. I imagine they probably crumble over time and uh, it's kind of like the the 12 apostles in, in Australia where you have these long spires and then over a few years they kind of collapse so a few million years a few million years so you you know you better go out and see them before they're all they're all gone Nature is so cool. I feel like this is one of those places where they have had like some sort of Red Bull 
event where like the have. guy on like a wingsuit flies through underneath the bridge. I don't know if they've done that yet, but I'd be surprised if they haven't. Mm -hmm. It looks like the perfect little target. That would be so scary. Not a lot of room for error. Mm -mm. It's <laughs> awfully small. <laughs> Most of our meals so far on this trip have been eaten literally in the car exactly like this because we don't want to leave the dog alone. And it's also supposed to be cheaper to eat from the convenience stores, although I don't know, $16 for a wrap and two hot dogs. Doesn't seem very cheap to me. Yeah. It's not <laughs> been as affordable as I thought it would be, especially yeah. in these smaller towns, yeah. gas stations. Medium coffee. Why is everything bigger? It's the size of my face. What does a large look like? Uh, like it's gotta be like like a leader. <laughs> but we are on our way now to, um, where are we going to? Oh, a little town I think called William. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we've had to change plans. So we obviously really want to do a lot of camping on this trip, as we've said, and you know, yeah. we tried. But you guys, it's, like I know we keep saying this, it's so cold. It's so cold. I think we underestimate how cold it would be. <laughs> and we should have maybe planned it a bit better. I but if, in case you haven't realized, Nicole and I have really not been planning anything. We've yeah. been booking just, things on the same day, yeah. and even Bryce National Park, we just decided, yeah, it's gonna be a thing. Oh, look, that like, looks like yesterday. a cool thing. Let's do it. It's just like been very on so, a whim. So, the other thing we didn't realize is how high elevation a lot of these places are that we wanted to camp, and that's what's making them so cold. It's like the cities aren't that cold, but once you go to these national parks, you're at mm -hmm. like over 8,000 feet or over 2,000 meters. So, honestly, it really sucks. Like, we really got excited to. Like camp in the car. We prepped the car for some camping. We obviously managed the one night and that is all that I think we're gonna get, honestly. Because That's we're good. not really planning anything, because <laughs> we don't really have anything booked in terms of accommodations and whatnot, we're yeah. like a tenting and that. We're not gonna go to Zion National Park, but yeah. we originally thought we would. Uh, we're hoping to stop at some national parks along the way. Which ones? Uh, maybe Yellowstone and Grand Teton. Yeah, and um, but we're not exactly Zion. Yeah, just depending on how far we can get on the driving. Instead, we're gonna beeline it straight to Williams, there's near Flagstaff, Arizona, mm -hmm. which will be where we will stay for two nights so that we can explore, properly explore, Grand Canyon National Park. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, if we can get two national parks under our belt during this road trip, mm -hmm. like through the States, that's pretty good. Yeah. The first time for Nicole. I'm, mm -hmm. I've been there a long time ago. Mm -hmm. First time for the dog, of course. I did really want to do Zion, but ooh, the more we looked into it, it's just like, it's just not a great choice to do it right now with our current schedule. So, it is what it is. Um, but I won't, I won't lie. I'm bummed. I was excited for car camping. Mm -hmm. I was excited to spend more time outside. I think it'd be really fun for the dog. But honestly, like it's just it's just not happening. We could do some car camping in Mexico. I know, I'm hoping. It'll Mexico be hot. car camping. It'll be hot there. Mexico car camping might be a little bit more interesting. Of an adventure. <laughs> It'll be an adventure. I don't know. I feel like when you stayed on the side of the road somewhere in the middle of Idaho, random rest stop. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good, at least it gives good you test. a good gives Yeah, a good, good yeah, test. Good start. Good test. Cheers to convenience store food. Cheers. Oh, it's spicy. that's built up that you're just driving through is remarkable. What highway are you even on? 89 or something? Yeah, I think, I think yeah. so. I just feel like this is, this 
would just be a cool place to like do like a big bicycle challenge or, or motorcycle ride or a, I guess a road trip. Road trip. <laughs> it's so gorgeous. It's so, so beautiful. I think what's cool about it is it's just like you're in, you're just driving through Utah. Like, I don't think we're anywhere particularly special. Like, no. we chose this route because it takes us from Bryce Canyon to nearby the Grand Canyon. So it was not like we specifically chose like, oh, let's go in this beautiful area and drive through there. Nope, this is just the way Google took us. And it is stunning. Stunning. I, I love how like we totally didn't plan this <laughs> and it ended up just being such a such an amazing route. Nailed it. What is happening? Wow, that was pretty cool. Oh man. <laughs> that was so cool. What is this? Wow. Watch the just road, so not so the far. view. Oh my god. Ooh, I almost want to stop. Yeah, let's stop. Jeez, this is wild. How did we... I don't know. I got it. It's... What? We just didn't plan much and... Here we are. Here we are. Now that... <laughs> nice job. Holy smokes. Cool. This is so beautiful. Also, I think we came here at the perfect time of day because it looks so beautiful in this light. And I'm like, yeah, this was planned. Totally planned. <laughs> Very on purpose. <laughs> I really didn't know what to expect from the geography of the road that we were going to be going through as we passed through the United States, but I think I expected some sort of red rock and some cool tall mountain plateaus, but I did not expect this. Um, you know what's kind of funny? We like woke up this morning and I was like, oh cool, go to Bryce Canyon. I didn't know that today was probably the most beautiful day of this drive. Yeah, yeah it's totally. Like, I had no idea this was gonna be the most beautiful day. I mean, maybe tomorrow will be even more beautiful, but I think it's I, probably today. I just can't believe just how incredible and expansive everything looks. Somewhere in there, there's a river. So it's cool, it's like there's like the river level, then there's this level, and then the, there's a plateau, so there's like multiple levels of ground happening here. <laughs> that's that's my observation. Science, nature. <laughs> I don't know how it happens. <laughs> the dog though, they just come out and pee, so. Yep, that's dog's okay. happy. Hey there, good morning. Good morning. There you go. And would you like a map? Ah, yes, uh, yes please. please. Does the visitor center not open until 10? Is that yes. right? Okay, awesome. Okay, Thank great. you so much. You're very welcome. Thank Have you. a good day. You're welcome. You Thank you. Yay. You got a map too. Grand Canyon pocket map. I haven't heard of the Grand Canyon. Just like that. Just, uh, just okay. Go to the Grand Canyon now. The funniest thing is that it was just on the way. I mean, it's a little out of the way. I, I mean, like... Maybe. So little that it would be ridiculous to have to come. Yeah, it, yeah would be, I know. it would be silly not to. I know. I really wish they had a section of these maps that's just, like, dog-friendly areas. Like, why does no one do that? No one Bus thinks, rules, no, no pets. One, no one thinks about you. <laughs> Seriously, it's like people know they're, like, not supposed to bring their dogs, and then there's just no information on it as a result. Fine. Unless she's a service animal. Can you be a service animal, please? Service animal. A Grand Canyon. Whoa! <laughs> Holy smokes! Wow, what a fall! So good morning. Today I don't even know what of this road trip. We decided to take the day to just come to the Grand Canyon. We're staying at like an hour outside of the Grand Canyon just so we can have the day to enjoy this place. You know, I've been to the Grand Canyon once before when I was like in 14? my yeah, 14 or 15 or something like that, and I don't remember at all what it looked like. I just know that it was a very quick stop and a long road trip with family. But uh, I don't know why we had a quick stop. This is amazing. I didn't realize how... Grand. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I wasn't gonna say grand or, or big. Just how far it went, goes. You know, when you think of a canyon, I think of just like a crevasse almost. Mm. And I didn't realize how the other side is so far from here. 
I saw on a map when we came in that something you can do here is like camp overnight like in the valley like you hike all your gear in and actually hike there and there's totally something that Miko and I would do if we didn't have the dog but it said that it's a thousand meter which is like a three thousand feet drop uh, into the valley to then like start hiking around and now that we're here I'm like oh yeah that looks like a thousand meters it's a huge canyon it's a huge canyon it's it probably is probably the biggest it's probably the biggest this is one of the natural wonders of the world I think tick just tick that off the list <laughs> natural wonder of the world even a dog can take it off. You're looking the wrong way. Let's keep going, then. Okay. It's strange as a Canadian to have never been to the Grand Canyon, to be honest. I'm pretty proud that I'm managing to finally get here. It's really cool. It's really neat. I don't know what I expected. Like, I've seen photos, but I think when you actually come and like see just how giant it is, it's like, oh, this is what the fuss is all about. <laughs> this is a way nicer path than Bryce Canyon. Like. It's paved, but it still feels like natural. It's really long. There's trees everywhere. It's all fenced. Um, I will say I'm very, very impressed with the amenities. And it's so accessible. Like anyone could come here using the wheelchair or anything. How cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> Babe, I, I caught that. I almost caught the moment you fell off the Grand Canyon. This is way less of an edge than it looks like. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually, it's actually kind of scary. <laughs> I'm fine though. Where is she going to get here? Yeah. Okay, eek about <laughs> behind the scenes of how we get these pictures of Evie. Like up this right? Yeah. Just the goal. I think this is Route 66. Yeah, like, how, how are we on Route 66 and we didn't know? So we've stayed two nights now in Williams, and it is super cute here. Yeah, and it's I like, think it's because we're pretty sure it's on Route 66. <laughs> it's like a fun little town. Like, it, yeah. it, there's lots of, uh, I don't know, vibrant streets. Yeah. Lots of decorations, and I, uh, I think it's because of the fact that this is part of the famous Route 66. Pretty sure. All right, what's the plan of the day, love? So today we're going to be heading towards Nogales. Yeah, Which is like a, a big a big stretch. It's going to be a long driving day. Yeah. But uh, at the end of it, it should bring us basically to the Mexico-U.S. border. Yeah. So Nogales is a town right before the border, and our plan is to be there so that the next day, tomorrow, we'll be able... Wow, that's tomorrow. That's tomorrow! We'll be able to cross into Mexico like bright and early, like first, first like thing. Like literally first thing. Right when they open so that there's just yeah. any issues, we have time to deal with it. Yeah. But that's, uh, yeah, that's the plan today. I think it's 300 yeah, my, or 400 miles or something. My uh, Google says 352 miles right now. So, so, so not long, bad. It's a good day. Yeah, it'll be a good driving day. I think Evie's ready for it. She has been exhausted since the yeah. Grand Canyon yesterday. We, uh, we actually had to give her her first, like, shower. I mean, I usually we'd give her a bath, but we had to give her a shower oh yesterday. Oh my gosh, yeah. After the Grand Canyon, she's just so dusty from all the playing that she's been doing. Yeah. And uh, it was just, it was hilarious. Kratom! Kratom! <laughs> so I guess this is life on the road when you're a dog now. We also realized that we need to kind of more formally introduce you guys to Evie. So Evie is six years old. She is an Australian Labradoodle, and we have had Evie since she was eight weeks old. We got her as a puppy. She was just teeny tiny, the cutest little puppy. Um, and when we left for full-time travel, yeah, she was, gosh, three and a half, going on four, I guess. And uh, yeah, my sister and her husband have had her for the last two and a half years they've been watching her. And she's had an amazing life. She's just like the chillest, calmest, like most lovable dog. She's a very much, we like to think of her as very much as an adventure dog. Yeah. We've taken her on so many hikes. Yeah. Uh, before we left for full time travel, and that includes a lot of hiking and camping and backcountry yeah. camping back and country. front country camping. And she loves yeah. to catch a ball and catch a frisbee <laughs> and sticks. Yeah. She, and she loves to go swimming. Yeah. She's always been up for anything. Like, I think that's what has made us feel confident that we could bring her on this trip is that like as long as she's with like her people she's yeah. up for whatever 
she's like, okay, we're just going to do that then. And that's where I felt confident that, like, she could adapt to this. We'll see, obviously. This is a very different life for her. The last six years have just been, like, small weekend adventures and then chilling on the couch during the week. But I think she's going to, I think she's doing good and really good. I think she's going to slide into it very easily. Yeah. I'm just more or less, more curious about how she's going to do with the hot weather. Yeah, once we get to Mexico. She's been a Canadian dog all her life, mm-hmm. born and raised in Canada. Yeah. Loves the snow. Absolutely loves, the, loves snow. the snow. Yeah. And, you know, oftentimes you'll find her just burying herself in the snow, <laughs> bur- burying around. her nose in the snow. Yeah. So I'm really curious to see what she's going to be like on... Yeah. Like in hotter weather and yeah. on beaches. She she's also, gonna be a beach dog. She's gonna be a beach dog. She also does love water. So I mean I'm excited to like have access to the ocean for her more often and hopefully she can spend a bit more time swimming. But I think as long as like we're there, you know, she's gonna be good. Good girl. Closer. Good girl. This is the part of the drive that I'm pretty sure Evie thinks is the main part that we are basically here to do and that is so that she can go out to various different parks around the US <laughs> and uh, catch either a frisbee or a ball. <laughs> Hi girl. This is kind of like her happiest time and she doesn't really care for any of the actual national parks that we visit but... No, she's just going to be acquainted with all the random middle of nowhere parks throughout the states. But she loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely loves it. Luckily every small town always has like a few different parks to choose from and uh, there's always one here that uh, is just perfect for a ball throw or a frisbee throw. It's also really cool like obviously without the dog here like this is the kind of stop Miko and I would never make the two of us. Yeah. So it's cool to like slow down a little bit at times for the dog and make sure she gets some exercise and then you get to like stop in these random towns that otherwise we wouldn't spend time in. So I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> I think by the end of uh, traveling through Mexico and Central America I'm gonna be a very good uh, frisbee tour? Because uh, at present I'm terrible. I mean, she doesn't care, but. <laughs> now that. And then we'll spend three nights in Arizona. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess so. Right? Yeah, we ended up sleeping in Arizona for three nights. We also have to get through the border, which you know, I won't lie, I'm pretty nervous about. Like, I feel like, I think it'll be okay. It's just that like, we're used to just going through border just us, right? And now we have to bring us and like, you know, immigrate ourselves. And then also import a car and a dog. We have never brought yeah. a vehicle or a pet across the border in our whole lives. We're still not even. Like we still not even done getting everything we need to get. No. We need to buy Tonight, uh, we have to. <laughs> Mexican like car insurance because yeah. our car insurance from Canada only works in Canada and the US. Yeah. It doesn't work for Mexico. You have to get insurance for Mexico. like Mexico. Car from, insurance from Mexico. Car insurance from Mexico. Car insurance from Mexico. Another thing we've never done, right, is buy insurance for a vehicle outside of our country of where we're from. So we gotta do that tonight. We also need to get health insurance for Mexico tonight. We're gonna figure out SIM cards for Mexico tonight. We need, yeah. data. We need data. And we have no idea where we're staying in Mexico tomorrow. <laughs> Not a clue. <laughs> I did not sleep very well. <laughs> I am actually feeling pretty anxious about this border crossing. I feel like the information that we have about the border crossing, that includes like what to do with the dog in the car, it's just like not quite as clear as I'd like it to be. 
It's it's all there. You yeah. Just, you just not. It's not a hundred percent laid out exactly. No. You need this, this, and this at and, these points. And I think it's because it does really change, like day to day, person to person, just depending on like who we get. So like my hope is that it's smooth sailing, but I've just like read a few too many horror stories. I think, um, particularly with like dogs and vehicles, um, that are making me feel very nervous for the border crossing. Which is happening now. <laughs> Which is happening now. Yeah, we're gonna about we're about to drive there. Like right now, it's only like ten minutes away, and uh, it's bright and early. Maybe we'll get a coffee first. <laughs> Maybe. Just to uh, calm me down. The anxieties. <laughs> and then uh, hopefully we'll be on our way to Mexico. Yeah. So we are gonna go across the border right now, but you guys are gonna have to check back in next week to see how that goes, as well as our first few days in Mexico, road tripping through Mexico. We hope you enjoyed the vlog. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you the next one. What do you think about Arizona? <laughs> cool. Good talk, Eve. <laughs>